So in a lot of my videos, I talk about selling expensive items, right? And these expensive items are often large and heavy. So picture things, you know, like this desk right here, right? This table, I mean, this chair, like most things that people think of when they wanna sell something expensive usually is large and heavy. And there's literally thousands of these different niches. But what happens after people start getting these ideas in their head is they message me and they're like, Anton, how am I gonna make money if I have to ship this huge thing? Like, how does that even work? So that is exactly what we're gonna talk about, guys, in this week's episode of Dropship Weekly. So the first thing that's important to call attention to, especially now in 2018, is when most people think about drop shipping or they Google drop shipping or they go on YouTube and see drop shipping videos, they're typically about drop shipping from China, right? That yes is one method of how to do this, but drop shipping is simply a business model where you sell products and someone else fulfills the orders. So I just want to get that out of the way first, right? Drop shipping does not mean Oberlo, it doesn't mean drop shipping from AliExpress, it doesn't mean from China, it doesn't mean Amazon it doesn't mean eBay, it's simply a way to fulfill orders, okay? So now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about how these orders get fulfilled. Well, if you're working with different suppliers, and this could be in China, or this could be in the States, or this could be in Australia, it could be anywhere. Someone buys the product from you on your website, typically, and then after they buy the item, you have your supplier ship this item to your customer. Now, the way this often works most frequently and ideally is that your supplier will actually ship on their account. So in this situation, it doesn't matter if the item is small, it doesn't matter if the item is big, you don't have to worry about it because your supplier will ship it directly to your customer on their account and bill you for it. Now, if this is ever a possibility, which again, it often is, then don't worry about it. Let them do that. That's always the win. If they could do it on their own account, they probably ship more volume than you, which means they get better discounts. That means the insurance is gonna go through their account. That means, you know, that's a win. Now, if they don't ship on their account, you're gonna have a couple options, right? And this is true whether the items are small or large. If the supplier tells you, okay, you know what? You can sell these products. We're, we have them in our warehouse. You let us know when they're ready to ship but you have to ship on your account as the retailer, as the drop shipper. So when that happens, you have some options. And if the items are small, if they're, you know, and typically the way I look at it is if it's like under like 30 inches by 30 inches by 30 inches, that size item is usually better to ship with something like UPS or FedEx. And if your supplier will not ship on their account and the items are around that size, then you can usually either give them your UPS account number, your FedEx account number, and again, they'll just you know put that in their system, they'll ship it for you, but it will be billed to your account, okay? No problems there. But what if you wanna sell those large and heavy items? What if you wanna sell these desks what if you want to sell, you know, stoves? What if you want to sell wood flooring in huge boxes? That type of stuff, anything that big, again, if it's not on your account, don't worry about it. But if you're shipping these large and heavy items, don't give anyone your UPS account number, don't give anyone your FedEx account number, and say ship through that. And here's the reason why. With big items, with big bulky items, and again, I usually, you know, as a frame of reference, picture something like 30 inches by 30 inches by 30 inches. Bigger than that, you can ship with UPS or FedEx and it'll go through freight. So UPS freight, FedEx freight. The problem with that is those companies, even though they're amazing for deliveries, are not built for freight shipments. And if you wanna ship freight, which again is the term we're gonna use for these big items, they are gonna destroy you with charges. It's gonna be so expensive that you're not gonna be able to make any money because all the money is gonna to go towards shipping, all your profit. Now, what can you do, right? Because obviously people are selling these big items. How are they doing it? How are you gonna do it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So keep in mind that they are gonna to have to go through what are known as freight carriers. Now, freight carriers are Really, there's hundreds of them, but if you're driving on the highway, you'll probably see a ton of huge trucks that have like random company names on the side, and a lot of those companies are freight ship uh, freight shippers. So don't picture like you know one or two major companies that do this because it's not like that. You know, it's not like where we have UPS, FedEx, DHL. It's like there are tons of companies that offer these services. Now that might start to sound confusing, right? Because okay, well then how do I pick one? How, you know, who should I ship with if I have to ship via freight? The thing 
thing is, there's never one answer. The reason there's never one answer is because there's not fixed rates and things vary a lot based on what it is you're shipping, where you're shipping it from, and where it's going to. Not just that, but the rates, the shipping rates for freight shipments are usually negotiable. So keep this in mind, right? And again, if you're thinking like, Anton, that sounds like too much work, I don't wanna do that, then sorry, don't do it. You know, someone else will make the money. But if you, know, you wanna learn more, let me explain this with an example like this desk, okay? Let's say you were selling this and you wanted to ship it. I'm in, a, I'm in Austin, Texas right now at our office. So let's say you were selling it and I was your supplier and I was in Austin and you had a customer in New York and you were like, all right, Anton, um, I wanna get it to New York. What I would recommend you do is go through what's called a freight broker. Now, a freight broker is someone that's gonna go around and actually find different quotes for you. So they're gonna give you different prices based on different companies. I mentioned there are literally, I would have to assume hundreds of them, if not, you know, 100 plus. They're gonna actually have their system where they can enter in your shipment details. You know, they'd get the weight, they'd get the size, they'd get my address where our warehouse was, they would get your customer's address, and they would say, here are your options, here are different delivery times, uh, here are different prices. Now, that's step one, right? Go through a freight broker, that's gonna get you the best price. And let me also say, like, the difference between, even if that's all you did, if you went to one freight broker and you got quotes, the difference between doing that and then going to UPS Freight is probably gonna save you, like, like three or four hundred dollars, so well worth your time. Now, with that being said, I mentioned these prices are also negotiable. So if you go to one freight broker and you get that quote, it doesn't mean that that's the best price. So what we do and what I recommend you do if you wanna make as much money as possible off every high ticket order, which of course you should, what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually work with multiple freight brokers. And you're actually gonna want them to compete against each other for the best price. Now, they make commissions obviously based on you know their markup on these freight shipments, but because you are gonna be moving a lot of business, right? You're working with different warehouses across the country, you're shipping to different customers all over, what you're gonna do when you get a new order in, again, you, let's say you got an order for you know this, this desk and you wanted it shipped to New York, you would contact multiple freight brokers, we do this via an email where we BCC everybody, and you're gonna give them the shipment information, then they're all going to respond with their best prices. Now, once you have the best of the best, let's say you, you know, email three of them, then you could take that best price, email it to the other two, and say, hey, this is our best quote right now, can you beat it? And again, I know that probably sounds like a lot of work, but here's the thing, again, it could save you hundreds of dollars per shipment, per order. If you get a few orders per day, that's literally saving you, making you, keeping in your bank account an extra few hundred dollars plus every single day, just because someone sent a few emails. And as a business owner, when you're first starting, yeah, you do these yourself, but once you know you have a system for it, you know which brokers you're working with, definitely a task that could easily be outsourced to a business manager that you hire or to a virtual assistant. And again, if you're moving any type of volume, even if you're shipping one thing a week, it could save you 100, 200 bucks a week, you know? And the more you grow, the more money it will save you. Uh, the reason I wanted to share you know, this in this week's episode of Dropship Weekly and in this message really is because you know I've been doing e-commerce now for like since 2007, so what, 11 years, 12 years? And when I first started, I didn't know this whole broker approach. So we were working with one freight company for years, and then I found out that, oh, there's actually not like a fixed price here. Other people could beat these prices, and that's what happened to me. Like I started saving hundreds of dollars per shipment. Um, I don't wanna say I was getting ripped off, but I mean, I kinda was, like I could've got a better price. And I, I can't even think of, you know, how many tens of thousands of dollars it cost me over the first few years in business because I didn't know it was possible to work with other freight brokers to shop quotes to get better deals. So something I definitely want you to keep in mind if you're thinking of selling expensive items that are large and heavy. Maybe you already are, but um, if you are, then you know start this today. If you're not, keep this in mind for the future. Again, yeah, it takes extra work, but it's well worth it because it keeps more money in your bank account, adds to your bottom line, and again, a great way to spend time. So as always, guys, hope you got value from this week's episode of Dropship Weekly. If you did and you're not subscribed, subscribe yet, hit that subscribe button and please click the notification bell so you get notified every time I do a new video here. And please give the video a like if you got value as well. Uh, with that being said, guys, I'm also gonna announce the winner of the Dropship Lifestyle hoodie from last week. So um, if you wanna see that, stick around for a minute or so and we will announce the winner. So thanks again, everybody. Hope you got value and I'll see you next week for Dropship Weekly. Bye. 
right, guys. So now I'm going to pick the winner of the hoodie from last week. So let me get the URL. And by the way, if you haven't seen this video yet, definitely check it out. It's about which e-commerce trends to follow and which to avoid. But I'm going to put this URL here. I will search for it, give it a second, and then we will start the raffle. And let's see who the winner is from last week. All right, cool. The winner is Methodic, and the comment says, love the video. Awesome. So appreciate that. Happy you love the video, and you are the winner of the hoodie. So all you got to do to claim it is go to our Dropship Lifestyle channel page, click on the About tab, and then you could send a message through there, and we will get the information we need to ship your hoodie out. So congratulations. Again, the winner is Methodic for the comment, love the video. So thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next week for Dropship Weekly.